Welcome back folks. We're going to do coordinate geometry. This is going to be a crash course. On this line you have the X axis and then here you have the Y, the vertical. And they are perpendicular lines. And on the X axis you have positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and then on the negative x, you have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and negative 10. On the y, you have positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, not perfectly drawn to scale, obviously. Uh, the first order of business is let's see how they graph. Uh, okay, that's let's say you want to see where the point 2, 6 uh, is located and then they always put an x y so x is first then y uh, and again there's the x here's the y uh, and if we want two on the x we would go one two on the x uh, and then we go up six positive on the y one two three four five six so it goes six there there so there's the point it's right there there's the point two six got that all right now let's try uh, another point let's say we want a point uh, let's say we're here negative three five uh, so the first thing on the x we go negative three negative one negative two negative three and then we go up five on the y one two three four five so it would be you know like there there right there there's that point negative three five it's right there uh, then let's say we want to graph negative 2, negative 5. So we would go, uh, let's see if we could erase some of this. Eh. Okay, so we'd go negative 2 on the, well, let's use a different color. We'll go negative 2 on the x. So there's negative 1, there's negative 2. Then we go negative 5 on the y. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have negative 2 on the x, negative uh, 5 on the y. So there is negative 2, negative 5. All right, uh, and then they have what's called coordinates here. On the top right, that's called the first, uh, I'm sorry, quadrants. Uh, so quadrants like split in four. That's the first quadrant. This is the second quadrant. They go counterclockwise. This is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. All right, now what we want to do is we want to do a linear equation. And the way to, to calculate the linear equation goes like this so let's say you have a point that is 2 and 10 and then you have another point that is 1 and 2 uh, oh my daughter is here hey say hi Hi. hey are you having fun yeah okay what are you doing aren't you supposed to be asleep <laughs> uh, go back to sleep all right She's silly okay so we want to get um, 2 10 and 1 2 uh, and then we're going to get what's called the linear equation, which is in the form of y equals mx plus b. All right. So we start with 2 and 10. Um, technically, you don't need to draw this out, but we're doing it just so you can conceptualize it. So 2 and 10 goes 1, 2 on the x, and then we go up 10 on the y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that is point 2 and 10. And then 1 and 2, the second one, we go one on the x, then we go up two on the y, which is right there. So that is point one and two. Now in theory, once you have two dots on, like imagine a piece of paper, you have two dots, and then imagine if you had a ruler that's like, you know, a thousand feet long, right? All you need is those two dots, and you just need to line it up, and there you go. Uh, then you could draw a line. That line will go forever in both directions. Uh, and now what we wanna do, is we want to get that equation y equals mx plus b uh, the way to do that the first order of business we need to get the slope the slope is the m uh, in this equation and the slope is always the rise over the run now the word rise is vertical so that's the differentiation in the y so y2 minus y1 the run is horizontal so that's the differentiation in the x so x2 minus x1 and then on these points this is xy we'll call 2 and 10 We'll say like x y, x1, y1 is 2 and 10. So 2 is x1 and 10 is y1. And then x2, y2, the second points, we'll call it 1 and 2. 
Uh, you know, even if you flip flop those two points, it's fine. It'll still come up with the same slope. So now let's do that. So y2 minus y1, uh, y2 is, what the heck is y2? y2 is two, uh, which is right there. And y1 is 10, which is right there. So two minus 10 over x2, x2 is one, and x1 is two. So two minus 10 is negative eight and one minus two is negative one. So we have negative eight over negative one. The negatives cancel out and you know, that just simplifies to eight. So the slope in that guy is eight, uh, which by the way, what that means, if you go back to rise over run, it's eight over one. That means it rises eight when it runs one. So it, it goes up vertical eight and then it goes horizontal one. So for example, if we start at the one, two, it goes up eight, so that would be uh, yeah, because the, the y is 2, so it goes up 8 all the way to 10, and then it runs 1, you know, this way. So that's why it kind of goes this way and then a little bit to the right. Uh, and then that's why the, the slope is like that. Now, uh, so anyway, so the slope is positive 8. Uh, let's go over here. So we have now y equals 8x plus b. Uh, the b is what's called the y-intercept. So when x is zero, what is y type of thing? And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, we, we now have three unknowns. We have y, x, and b. But what we could do is we could plug in either coordinate for the x and y, and then we could get b. It doesn't matter which coordinate you plug in. You could plug in 210 or you could plug in 1, 2. As long as you stay consistent, you can't pick like one x from one coordinate and then one y from another. So I would probably do the 1 and 2 just because uh, numbers are a little smaller. So y is 2, so we go 2 equals 8 times x, and x is 1, plus b. We're going to solve for b. So then we get 2 equals 8 plus b. We subtract 8 from each side. Uh, 2 minus 8 is negative 6. That cancels out. So negative 6 equals b. Um, so now we have, that's the equation, y and this one y equals the slope which is 8 x uh, plus negative 6 or you could just say minus 6 it doesn't either way so that's the line equation y equals 8 x minus 6 by the way there's a few very important things here for example let's say uh, x equals 5 and we want to know what is y the reason why this linear equation is so important so x is 5 and we want to know what is what is y we just plug it into that equation Right, we have y equals 8x minus 6, so we plug in 5 for x, so we have y equals 8 times 5 minus 6, 8 times 5 is 40 minus 6 equals 34. So when x is 5, y would equal uh, 34, oops, sorry. So when x is 5, y would equal 34, that's a point, meaning x is 5 is right around here, while y is 34 would probably be way up here. So that's why it's that point, you know, somewhere like that, not drawn to scale, but five and 34. Uh, that's how it works. You could find any point you want once you have the linear equation. The other way you could find the linear equation in a lot of examples, they'll give you one point and just the slope. So let's say they give you the point one and five, and then they give you the slope. Uh, the slope is always m, m equals negative two and then you need to solve for the linear equation, y equals mx plus b. Uh, so then you have one point and then you have the slope is negative two. Now imagine you have a, a piece of paper and what you, you're just gonna get one point, where's one five? So one is means, we go back up here, that's the x coordinate, that's the y coordinate. So that's x equals one, there's one on x and there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on the x, but we just want x is one. Then we want to go up 5 on y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So uh, that point would be somewhere like that, 1 and 5. Uh, and then we have the, sl the slope is negative 2. Uh, that's a pretty steep negative slope. So let's see, uh, not, obviously again, not drawn to scale, but it would be something like this, let's say. Now we want to get this y equals mx plus b. We actually, we have four unknowns, y, m, x, and b. That's four unknowns, but we have three of them. We have an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and we have the slope of negative two. So if we plug in those three unknowns, then we're only gonna have one left, right? So y is five. The slope, which is m, is negative two. 
And by the way, I, anytime a slope is negative, uh, the line will go down this way. Anytime the slope is positive, then it'll go, you know, the, the opposite way. It'll go up. Imagine like going uphill, like from left to right. Now let's do it. Okay, so uh, we have we have y is five. The slope is negative two. X in this coordinate is one. Uh, where the heck do I have that color? Uh, X is one, and then plus b. B is unknown. So five equals negative two times one. That's negative two plus b. And then we're going to add two to each side. Seven equals b. So that's the. Uh, then we could plug that in. So now we have y equals m, which is negative two, x plus seven. That is the linear equation. Y equals negative two x plus seven. Uh, and just like the last time, if let's just say they give you the coordinate, they wanna, they give you y equals whatever, 20. Uh, what is x? Okay, so y equals 20 would be, you know, somewhere way the heck up here, right? Uh, so, or, or maybe even higher. But So when y is 20, what's x? It looks like if you come, you know, if you go like that, it looks like x is going to be some sort of negative number. But let's plug it into the equation uh, and that, that linear equation. We have y equals negative 2x plus 7. So we want to plug in y equals 20 and figure out what x is. y equals 20 times negative 2x plus 7. And then we would subtract 7 to each side. So we would get, my math is a little off, 20 minus seven is 13, 13 equals negative two X. And then we would multiply, uh, what would we multiply? We would divide by negative two or multiply by negative one half, same thing. Uh, so X equals negative 13 half or X equals, what would that be? Six, negative six and a half. So this coordinate here, if we go back here, the, this would be negative 6.5 uh, or, or negative six and a half on the x coordinate when y is 20. So that point there is negative 6.5 and y is 20, okay? A few other things to note is uh, sometimes it's not an exact line, it's not linear. Uh, so for example, let's say we have uh, y, you know, the, the typical example, y equals x squared, uh, and then we wanna graph that. The way to do that is if you want to look at like you have to punch in a, a bunch of points to see like where the, the, the graph goes because uh, it's not a linear equation. So it's not like you could just get two points and then draw a straight line. So let's say x equals zero. So you go back y equals x squared. Well, zero squared is zero. So then if x is zero, y is zero. So let's find that point. That's zero, zero, which is right there. Uh, let's say x equals one. So one squared is one. So if x equals one, then y equals one. So that's, that point is right there. So now let's say x equals two. Two squared is four. So if x equals two, that's, then y would equal four. So it just goes up one on the x, but it goes up a couple on the y. So it's, it's gonna get a little like, it's gonna keep getting steeper, watch. Uh, to say x is three, three squared is nine. If x is four, let's just do these, x, uh, y would be 16. So when x is three, y is nine which is way up here. And then it really goes up. When x is four, y is, is 16, which is let's say here. And let's just say x is five, five squared is 25. Wow, so we go one more on the x, but then we're going almost off the screen in terms of y. So on that side, as you can see, and forgive me, my draw, I'm gonna try to draw this as best as I can. On this side, it's gonna go like that, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a better curve. Let me do that one more time. All right, something like that. Uh, and then we want to see what about when x is negative. Uh, it actually is going to mirror that, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, if x is negative 1, well, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 uh, squared is 9. Negative 4. So when x is negative 4, uh, y would have to be 25. When x is negative 5, I'm sorry, <laughs> when x is negative 4, y would be 16. And when x is negative 5, y would be 25, right? So that's, so negative 1 on the x is here, positive 1 on the y is there. Negative 2 on the x is here, positive 4 on the y is here. Uh, negative 3 on the x and then positive 9. I'm just doing that, uh, that coordinate there, which mirrors that one. And then we have negative 4 on the x, which is there, uh, to positive 16. And negative 5 on the x is positive 25. So on that left side, 
it goes something like that. So that's how uh, that is, is drawn out. Y equals X squared. Let's try a goofy looking one. Um, let's try Y equals X cubed. Uh, same thing. You can't just do two points because this is not going to be a linear equation. Uh, so uh, you can only do that when there's no, uh, nothing is squared, uh, you know, like y equals 4x plus 8, okay, something like that. Then you could just do two points and draw a straight line. So y equals x cubed. Let's just draw a bunch of, uh, you know, x coordinates and y. So let's say x is 0. 0 cubed, then y would be 0. Let's try 1. If x is 1, 1 cubed is 1. If x is 2, 2 cubed is 8. If x is 3, 3 cubed is 9. x is 4. Uh, that would be 64 okay uh, the other side is gonna like mirror it but in a weird way it's like a diagonal mirror I'll show you uh, if X is negative 1 negative 1 cubed is negative 1 <laughs> negative 2 cubed is negative 8 negative 3 cubed negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 and then 9 times negative 3 is negative 27 negative 4 cubed is uh, negative 64 uh, so um, on that other one, we never had a negative y coordinate because anytime we squared x, it would always be a positive. This time, if you cube a negative, it'll still be negative. So let's do this one. Uh, let's see. So 0 and, and 0. Okay, that one's easy to plot out. So that's that point. And then 1 and 1 is right, uh, right there, let's say. Uh, 2 and 8. Whoa, all of a sudden it goes 2. There's x is 2, but it goes way up. To there uh, and then when X is 3 oh, oh I'm sorry right there I had a typo sorry about that um, it's 3 cubed is 27 so when X is 3 we go all the way to there and then when X is 4 we go to 64 so it's gonna this one it kind of starts slow and then all of a sudden it goes up like that okay uh, and then Negative 1 and negative 1 is sorry, negative one is like something like this. Uh, negative 2 and then all of a sudden negative 8 on the y goes like way down to here. And then negative 3 and negative 27. Negative 4 uh, and then 64. So this one is going to go something like that. Um, not exactly drawn to scale, but you get the point. It goes uh, up and down like that. That's uh, y equals x cubed. All right, if you want to get better at math, do this video right here. This one, right there, that one, that one, that one. Uh, and then you're going to love doing these. You're going to get better at it. Just keep on going. Keep on practicing, and you're going to rock and roll. Let's see if my daughter, are you still awake? Oh, she's asleep. All right, bye.